Hey guys, Brickman117, welcome back to the channel. I've got something a little bit different for you today. I was recently asked by the team over at Podcast Evolve to join them on their brand new show, Builds with Blocks, as a special guest to discuss my channel, my mocks, and my general interest in the Halo universe. For any of you that aren't familiar with Podcast Evolved, I strongly recommend you pay their channel a visit and watch a few of their shows. Guys and girls over there really know their stuff about Halo and they put some really interesting shows together, so I'm sure you won't be disappointed. It's definitely worth a subscription. In regards to their new show, Build With Blocks, this one will be purely dedicated to Halo Mega Constructs, so it's well worth showing them some support because that means more content for all of us. So for all of you that want to know more about me, how I got into Halo, how I go about planning and building my mocks, you should be well interested in this interview because we delve right into how I go about everything. So watch the interview and I'm sure you'll get the answers to many questions I get asked time and time again in the comment sections of the videos. Before we get into the interview, I just want to say a big thanks to Colin, Matt and Tom for having me on the show. It was an absolute blast. I really enjoyed it and I'm sure we'll do it again sometime. Welcome to Builds with Blocks, a show centered around the micro action figures and brick-based construction sets of the Halo universe. I'm your host, Colin Perkins, and I'm joined by Tom Fishenden. What's up? Matt Salvatore. How are we doing, guys? That was a pause. That's right, because there is one more, a very special guest. We're joined by Brickman117, also known, first name Chris. Welcome, Chris. Hey, guys. Over the past year and a half, Brickman117 has captured the attention and delighted fans of Halo Mega Constructs and likely all building and collecting enthusiasts. The stuff he's put out there is fantastic. He has sets, uh, set reviews, time-lapse builds, mock videos. I just watched your, um, your tour of your studio before the show. So lots of good stuff on that channel. And it's been, it's been awesome seeing you the work that you've uh, that you've been producing over the last year and a half so thanks so much we're really excited to have you on the show before we jump in we're going to go around the horn though um as we o always do just talk about what we've been doing um on the building front um you know we have you know we've talked about matt and his stop motion and um tom and his reviews and photography now we have a mock expert on the show this is going to be a lot of fun so um let's see honors chris do you want to have the honors you want to wait till last what you've been up to I'll let you guys go first. Okay, sounds good. Uh, Tom, what have you been doing on the building front? Okay, so on the building front, um, I was able to get my hands on a set that I've wanted for a long time mm -hmm. um, that I kind of have been really, really looking forward to, and that is Snowbound. Mm -hmm. So Ooh, nice. obviously Halo 3 multiplayer map. Yeah. Um, the Snowbound set itself is one of the Covenant structures and I'm just really, really kind of all about those structural builds because yeah. we don't get them enough. So anytime I can get my hands on them, I'm really, really excited to have them. Do you and have I've the kind base of, as well or just the Snowbound? I don't know. I've just okay. got the structure itself. I never mm -hmm. got the base plate, but I do have some of the older gen base plates. Like I've got uh, Battlescape 3 and Battlescape 1 nice. so I could potentially put it onto them and see what it looks like on them um, but my kind of plan for it and I've got this photograph in my head is I'm gonna set it up so it's behind my two tyrant AA turrets from Reach and I'm oh. gonna kind of make like a really cool looking Covenant firebase like so that. That is hopefully going to be a photo. It's going to pop up at some point. But yeah, had a lot of fun putting together that set and actually really, really enjoyed the build of it. So most of your so. photos are like up close. Do you take yeah. many wide shot uh, photography or is that just too, time too hard to get that setting right? It all depends, to be honest. So it's quite hard because obviously when you're shooting something that's a lot smaller, perspective mm -hmm. is a lot more important. Yeah. So 
with all of my Jurassic figures and things like that, I can get away with um, being a little bit more creative with environments because obviously they're bigger toys. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to mega constructs, I have to be really specific with the backdrops I use. So mm -hmm. um, I have been able to get a couple of kind of vehicle photos. Like, I don't know if you saw the one I released a couple of weeks back with the two warthogs. Um, but oh, I have right. been able to get some things like that. It's just kind of continuing to try and figure out a way to do that. It doesn't quite break the illusion that the photos are going for. Mm -hmm. One thing that I'm sure you're conscious about is, because I know you're you're in the garden taking pictures, yeah. <laughs> is like making sure that the blades of grass don't look like mutant um, flora. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. So how do you I mean, combat that? It's interesting. So I've kind of got like a few spots in my garden that are my go to spots. So we have a little patch of land right by our back gate that's got like loads of dirt and then some ferns growing through it. Mm -hmm. So I kind of use that for foresty photos. Then there's a bit down the back of our garden that's right next to a big evergreen hedge that's kind of like all loads of mud tracks and things like that underneath the trees. Mm -hmm. um, so I use that for like the combat of swamp picks that I'll be releasing yeah. soon. Um, kind of like any muddy scenery. And then anything else I kind of try and find. It sounds really weird, but I look for patches of grass where the grass is like dried out because yeah. then you still get the cool effect with it. Mm -hmm. But obviously you've not got like really, really long blades of grass that stand out. But then, I mean, even then it all comes down to perspective and getting good angles because sometimes you can shoot in grass, but if you get the angle just right, it's not that off-putting. So sure. it's kind of always trying to make the best of what's available and come up with new creative ways to use the spaces that I've got access to. Very cool. Anything else you've been up to you want to mention? No, I think that's enough talking from me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, um, Matt, sir, I've seen some stop motion videos of yours. Some have been posted. Anything else you've been doing? I have. Actually, I've been working a little bit more on stop motion. Uh, recently, I was able to put on the uh, Podcast Evolves First Strike review. And so I was listening to that yeah. as I was taking some pictures and stuff like that. I haven't listened yet. How is it? It was good. It was very good. It's it, it's uh, exactly how I remember the book. Very um, hard to follow. <laughs> if I remember right. reading it right. Uh, There's time so I've been travel doing a, on that one. I know, right? Time travel mm. and Halo. Maybe we'll see some in Infinite. Mm. Um, <laughs> it'll be the end game moment we all wanted. Yeah. Um, right. So I've been doing a little more stop motion. Uh, I've been building some different sets design, and I've been working a little more with some some lava so hopefully that kind of ties in a little more with lava. with what i've been doing okay. um and I, that's actually pretty much all i've been really doing on the construction front i haven't picked up any new sets um i did have the a nightmare with my um let valere so i finally opened let yeah, um right. and to my the ongoing great, saga i know the ongoing saga it's a tragedy now it's no longer a comedy oh, no. so <laughs> so um i picked up let and um, I was really excited. And so I took a picture and I know I shared that with you guys on the chat. Um, and so I didn't open them for a while because I had got to, got to some stuff and I finally got back to him and I opened him up. And as soon as I opened the packaging, his hat popped off and I realized that the hat had been broken and the piece was in his head. So oh, no. I completely freaked. And cause you know, I'm like, Oh my gosh, you know what this, the head's off. And so the, so I, I got some, so I actually have a lot, a couple of mega construct figures that are broken. So I just kind of put some glue on it and I put it together. Uh -huh. And, um, so I put the glue on and I put the hat on and everything was fine. And he was drying. And then I turned him around and he didn't have his back armor plate. Oh my God. <laughs> so oh, I thought, okay, maybe I opened the package and because I saw the hat flip off, uh -huh. I totally like lost where the back piece went maybe the back piece fell off and so i was i tore apart my room looking for oh, it i couldn't no. find it That's and so worst. i remember i sent you guys that picture and said can you see if his back pieces is, is on there because i uh -huh. wanted to see if he was still there and it wasn't so i mean uh so obviously he, i opened it up and i should have looked in the back but so that so i ended up pulling the uh banished covenant figure that you get in the banished bansy and i swapped the backs I put the back on. So I have a complete let with a broken hat. So 
oh, helmet. Man. Over. So it's it was very disappointing. You I should didn't cry. you should contact customer service and see if they can do anything for you. Yeah, I'll see what I can do. I've a uh, I'm actually I'm okay with having uh, pieces that are broken and with like a little bit of glue because I've done it so well that I don't I can't even tell that there's glue on there. So, uh-huh. um, but uh, yeah, no, I probably will contact them. Awesome. But that's wow, been that's too bad. That's been oh, the man. that's been the ongoing saga of yeah. the Let Valere. It ended in a tragedy. I'm so sorry to hear that. So I'm gonna toss it to Chris. Have you had much experience with like fixing stuff? Like, are you you're going through so many pieces? I've seen, you know, a lot, all, most of your videos. You have so much stuff in your collection. Is it is it, is super glue a thing in your life? <laughs> um, not yet. There's usually a, a, a fixed one somewhere or an uh, unbroken one that I can just use. So all of the, I don't throw anything away. All of the, all the pieces or figures that are broken, I just put them all in a pile for to deal with another day and potentially repair in the future. Okay, I have one of the lots, and I'll I'll go. I I want uh, to hear what you've been up to, but one of the lots that I've I've gone through has had like a dog has chewed into the piece, Um, and so do you save even like ruined pieces, or do you toss those? No, if it's if it if it's beyond repair, then it you know it it will be thrown. Yeah. Yeah. I think I was keeping it just to catalog. Okay, this is the one that's missing because I was trying to build everything back up. Anyway. Mm -hmm. Chris, why don't you t- tell us about what you've been up to? Um, yeah, we're, we're super interested to, to hear. We've seen your latest mock video up. Um, Which was the, fantastic. Yeah, Which the glassing of Numa really cool Anything else you're working on? So those two are the most recent. Um, the First of all, the, the Shadow of Intent mock, and then off the back of that, the, di- the diorama of the new Mombasa, which was a lot of fun, but a bit yeah. of a... Uh, distraction really because I'd already started building the ultimate longsword um, mm-hmm. and I think it was viewer request maybe from from the channel that prompted me to attempt to build the shadow of intent because I didn't think I'd be able to do it um, so I was trying to prove to myself that I couldn't and then I did so I was quite pleased <laughs> with the result and, um, but that's out my system now. So now I'm back on to yeah. the longsword. I've um, I've shot a few scenes so far for uh, the, the part three. Okay. Um, so hopefully I should get part three finished next week to release next Friday, I would imagine. Very nice. So have you that's... been bu- buying any sets? Have, is it anything that like boxes that have been sitting around that you've been going through or is it, is it um, all focused on production right now? It's all focused on production, but part of production is finding the pieces in the boxes that i haven't unpacked yet so Mm -hmm. the most recent i didn't do a lot a loft haul or an ebay haul but i did a figure haul recently yeah i saw that Mm -hmm. which was from two recent ebay hauls and when i was looking for parts just the last couple of days for the longsword i opened up a box and found bags and bags of figures in there that I'd, i'd forgotten were in there so um yeah it's it's there's a lot of sorting left to do as much as when you watch the studio video, it's, yeah. I like to keep it organized. There's still masses of stuff that hasn't been sorted yet. So every mm-hmm. time I start a new build, um, there's a, it's really time consuming getting what I need to build. So there's been a bit of both really a bit of sorting and a bit of building, but I'm, I've got most of what I need. The, the silver and the dark gray for the long sword. I already had, a huge amount sorted so it's only if i run out of something i dive into the random boxes to then start pulling apart wraiths and god knows what else i can find that's the right color right um i, I want to get back to that sorting question kind of when we go in more into kind of your you know to the actual interview um so i'll go really quick and then um then we'll dive into more from chris so my um i've actually been pretty busy lately i finally built the battle on the arc master chief that model um the the full you know the, it's like almost i don't know what 10 inches tall the figure it's gorgeous it's amazing build lots of fun so if you have it um build it finally if you haven't picked it up yet grab it it's worth it it's a it's a really cool piece to have so um that's been cool uh i finally built a couple more i've been preparing for our warthog show that's going to happen eventually so i finally built my arctic warthog that was released mm. in like 2016 2017 right around there um, and the Warthog Run. I hadn't built either of those yet. So nice. those are um, complete. They've got those wide tires. 
Um, it's got this wide base on it, and it's got the the kind of the tubing that acts as the shocks for the um, for the wheels, which is new, is new. I hadn't built one like that before, um, so that was interesting. I didn't really like it to start with, but I, I now that I've been I sat on a little bit, I played with it a little bit more. I, I do like it. I'm just worried that those tubes are gonna maybe break down over time. Mm -hmm. um, so we will see. The other couple a couple other things that I've been doing. Um, the I picked up the Arbiter versus Master Chief set. I went into Walmart. I think I sent some pics to you guys um, as I so was jealous hunting. <laughs> so jealous. <laughs> so I have that, and we'll probably go into more thoughts on that. But there, the figures are are pretty great. Um, good, good color application. Some scuffing on Master Chief's armor. Um, Arbiter looks fantastic. I haven't had a chance actually to open it right before we got on the call, so I haven't had a chance to, to stare at it too much or compare him to the other Arbiters, but um, all good. The weapons are really cool, so definitely a, a cool check, cool set to check out. I also picked up, because I've been doing the Master Masters of the Universe set, so I picked up the He-Man vs. Beast Man set as well. Um, mm, let's see here, what else? Oh, I did pick up, this is an aside, and um, I don't know. I, I, I've mentioned that the only reason I mentioned this is because I mentioned that chess set that I'm working on for the uh, for Halo. I have the you know flood figures uh, for a, a set and I have um, banished and Marines and everything else. But I did pick up the there's a Lego iconic chess set. I picked that up and it's pretty sweet. I haven't built it yet, but I have plans to build that with my oldest, uh, my six year old and hopefully teach him a little chess. I think that'll be fun. Nice. Good yeah. game. Yeah, yeah, it's a great. Love, love me some chess. All right, let's get into let's get into Brickman. He's joined us. He set aside some time for us. He has this channel that he's been building over the last, you know, year and a half or so. Um, Chris, why don't you talk about a little bit about? And I don't know if you've mentioned this on your um, videos or, or anything that you have posted to the studio too. I don't remember. But what what is your history with Halo? Like, what's um, are you a longtime fan? Did if you joined more recently, like I have? Um, like what? What's what's your background on on the Halo front? Um, maybe ma mainly from the games. Um, when Combat Evolved first released, I picked up an Xbox, and that game just fell in love with it. And never looked back. Um, it's yeah. always it's always been in my life in in some way. Um, sometimes more intensely than others. Obviously, when a game release comes out, I've never really been into multiplayer side of halo so there's a lot mm -hmm. of stuff I've, you, you you can miss a lot of stuff if you don't get involved with the multiplayer um but the the campaign it's, it's always been about the campaign for for me personally and i read the books i love all of the all of the novels so i've been watching your interviews with the uh with the writers of oh the, yeah books which are fantastic by the way so mm -hmm. yeah, good job there very interesting to hear their thoughts on yeah. the books that you've read many times so yeah that was that was enjoyable and aside from that, it's, uh, I think you guys are probably definitely a bit more in the know than I am. But, um, you know, the whole mega construct side of it was just something that um, it was just something that I enjoyed once I got into it just mm -hmm. as a, a sort of creative outlet. But it was also sort of a memorabilia side to it as well. Yeah. Just the collection, I really, I really liked the thought of being able to collect all these things. So, yeah, that's that's it for me, really. So you've been playing the games for a long time. So you played through all the campaigns. You you pay attention to the story. You look forward to the story. Yeah. Then um, that's kind of the main reason. I'm not I'm personally. I'm not a big multiplayer guy. I'll I'll pop in and mess around with it, but I'm, I don't you know focus on it either. Um, so I'm on the same page as there. And then this is a you know an, a a lore channel. So it's perfect that you're you're more into the lore, more into the campaign stuff. That's uh that's great to hear. What um so are you a big Master Chief guy? Are you like what's your favorite ask like why Halo for you? Is it the science fiction aspect of it? Is it fighting alien stuff? Like what what's the draw for to Halo for you? Um definitely a lot to do with the Chief. And I think it's because for a lot of people that are into Halo now, they were born after it started, or mm -hmm. you know, especially multiplayer gamers or um, didn't catch the first one, they moved back to the first one after later ones. But if you're older, as I am, mm -hmm. and you know, you were of an age when Halo first came out, it was it was it was it was really big. It was massive compared to anything you would have been playing on previously on consoles. So it mm -hmm. was, you know, we all know it was groundbreaking, but if you weren't there, you I don't think you fully appreciate how groundbreaking it was for a console game. Mm -hmm. And to me, that it, it just 
I was so consumed by how impressive the the campaign was. It just it just really struck a chord with me. And then once I moved on to the books and saw how much deeper the story was than just what you get from Combat Evolved, because you don't really get a great deal about who the chief is or anything like that. But then when you start reading the book, the books, especially um, uh, the Fall of Reach, it, yeah, you know mm-hmm. that just it just blows it wide open. And uh, to me, it's 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 just so deep. And if you only play the games. I don't think anybody really realizes how deep the Halo universe is. Mm-hmm. Yep. Mm-hmm. That's true. Yeah, yeah you got to get get in that lore. It's, there's lots there, and if even like you know, and I've read the books and I've absorbed as almost everything, but I, I again, you know, my I've probably mentioned this on our mission debrief episodes. I don't retain it all, <laughs> so I need. <laughs> I mean, there's just a lot of information. So yeah, there is a lot. Uh, is I'll a lot. you know I'll make mistakes. I'll listen back to our episodes and I'll make mistakes referencing certain things. And, and it's just it's just because there's so much, right? But it's, that's that's the cool thing about the universe. It, it, there is so much, and it, and they've they've done a great job of making it so you can really immerse yourself into the universe. Yeah, especially yeah. so with the with the sets, right? So you you um, were I guess how did you get into building originally? Were you a Lego guy? growing up and then you you um started to enjoy uh what you saw from mega blocks or was it the reverse where you like you were more of just a halo fan and you saw these as little models that you could have in your in your home um it was it was complete accident really as a kid i loved lego um, mm-hmm. and then when i grew up and started having children most kids like lego so my children had lego and mm-hmm. you know that was semi interest there um and then it would have been when when series one of mega blocks was out uh, my wife bought me the rocket hog the original oh. wife, the ghost which i believe is series one as a christmas present and until uh-huh. that point when i unwrapped it i had no idea what it was i'd never heard of mega blocks before i wasn't buying lego at the time she just knew i was a halo fan saw it on amazon so she bought it and to be honest with you, I didn't build it. I just went, okay, not really. That's not really sure what what that's for, but it's uh-huh. Halo, so I just I just put it to the side. And it was probably <laughs> it was probably months, maybe six months before I don't know. It must have been a rainy weekend. I thought, oh, might as well open it up. And I don't think I appreciated until I opened it up yeah. how brick based it was because it looked so much like a warthog. It was so accurate. You know, it to me, it was it was. It wasn't Lego. It was just something that I was going to stick five or six pieces together and end up with a, a warthog. So when I actually mm-hmm. built it and realized how how brick based it was, I was super impressed by how detailed it was and how well they'd managed to uh, pull off the look of the warthog and, and then the ghost as well that comes with that set. And then the figures, as soon as you, I saw the figures and saw how detailed they were, and this is the original figures, not the super <laughs> right. articulated ones. These are right. the really basic ones, but mm-hmm. they were still, I was so impressed by by the detail of the little little Spartans that come with, with that set and then the, uh, the, the elite as well. And mm-hmm. from there, I started looking on, on Amazon every now and then. And if something came up and it looked like it was on sale for a really good price. And back back then you could get Mega Block sets for really good prices on yep. Amazon. Mm. <laughs> no sure. giveaway. You know, sets would come out for 80 pounds and they'd be on sale for Amazon for 25, 30 pounds. And I'd just yep. start buying them. And that's where it started really from there. Oh, interesting. So then you just started collecting and then I've seen your loft haul videos. So were you, so were you just collecting them and shoving them in a closet? Kind of like what I'm doing right now. Yeah, um, it, it, it was probably at, at least eight years before I built another set. Really? <laughs> eight, what? Years, eight years of buying before That's wild. I built another one. That warthog actually got, um, it got packed away, back in the box, um, all nicely, put back in the loft um, where uh-huh. it had come from before I built it. And then I started buying them and just adding them to that box whenever they were at a good deal. But it wasn't, you know, one once a week. Sometimes it would be six months I wouldn't buy anything. And then if something came up, I'd buy two or three sets and just keep stockpiling them. But 
in regards to building, uh, I didn't have the time. Uh, I, didn't, mm-hmm. I just didn't have the time to build anything. There was not a room around the house at the time. The children were really young still, so yeah. everything would have been. It's very difficult to pull toys out in front of children, not that <laughs> That's my <laughs> life right now. Yep, exactly. <laughs> yeah. I yeah, know all about yeah. this. So wait, I'm trying to figure out which one it is. Is it the white rocket hog? Yeah. Is it that one? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So yeah. I think that one came out just after the first wave when the pelican came out as well. I'm okay. sure that they were like, um, they came out basically in like, it wasn't like the second wave because it wasn't full sets. They kind of just did that and the pelican as add-ons to the first lot and then slowly started building them up from there. Mm. And I remember, and I don't know if you ever got to pick this one up, Chris, but they then redid that warthog as an updated set in the red versus blue line. And it just came with a couple of Spartans and they like rejigged the build to be a slightly more modern version of the warthog. I think it was kind of more like the halo reach style because i remember that was in argos for a very long time yeah so amazing as it sounds i don't have that set <laughs> there's quite a few <laughs> sets i don't have but oh, interesting. i've okay. never seen that set for sale well may i don't know maybe on ebay but not for a price that i would have paid for it yeah so now i don't have it and it's never come in all of those loft halls that you've seen that you know the hundreds of sets that i've received i've never received one in a loft hall oh wow <laughs> that's quite interesting yeah. yeah yeah it's possible it's like all those sets like i remember um way back when i was kind of collecting and all of that sort of red versus blue line came out here in the uk they were all the kind of sets that were i think they were exclusive to argos but they never really sold that well so you could get like snowbound for 15 pound back in the day which i really really wish in retrospect i had picked up because obviously i've just paid a lot more than that for it but it's <laughs> interesting hearing it from your perspective because obviously i think um colin and matt for you guys especially you've always been able to get a hold of this stuff but for us in the uk it was kind of a case of one day it was all out there really cheap and accessible and the next day it just almost vanished overnight really yeah that's wild. It's, yeah, it's, I've been... actually wor- it's actually worse for me than uh, for you, Tom, because I'm not actually in the UK. What? Yeah, surprise, surprise. Yeah, what? I'm not in the. I'm not in the UK. I won't disclose where I am, but there is that. There's no. There's, there, there is none, and there never has been any retail outlets where I live that sell oh, really um, a- anything like that. So everything where I live has to be bought online. Yeah. Why? Amazon yeah. or eBay. That's kind of where we're at. I've never, I've never at seen now. it in a shop. Go ahead, man. Oh, I was going to say that's kind of where we're at now with uh, <laughs> yeah. our situation. Yeah. <laughs> There's hardly that's anywhere. I, I just go on Amazon now. That's the only place I can go to find anything now. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, well, this is cool. So it's, it's fun to get your background. So do you have a favorite then? I don't think you mentioned if there was a favorite um, set. Chris? Um, but there's still limited sets that I've built. Most of the sets that I've built, I've released videos for on my channel. So uh-huh. it's really still only a handful of sets. But I think as a finished result, the the set I've been most impressed with as, as a display piece is actually the Spirit. Mm, yes. Dropship. Yeah. On its on its stand, it's kind of it's it's snow stand there on its side, and what it comes with, it comes with so many figures, and the way all the doors open, and everything. I just, it's it's a. I don't have any of you guys built it. I haven't built mine yet. No, I have it. It's tucked away, but I, I just from seeing the pictures, it looks like an amazing display piece. It is, and you can pick it. It's so solid and it's so well built. Obviously, from a from my perspective, where I I like to free build and try and create something myself. When I'm building a set that is actually built by the professionals, I, a lot of my time is is focused on how they've done it, how they put it together, and you know how they've made it strong enough to be yeah, a viable set. But mm-hmm. what they did with that set, I was really impressed with. You know, it's so accurate to what you see in game. It's really impressive, and it's a big ship as well when it's on display. It's you know, it's got a big presence. That's um, yeah, yeah. I'm I'm excited to open mine up. That's really good to hear. 
I, I'm curious because you mentioned that you, you you know you tinker a lot. I mean, that's a lot of the of your channel. Where did that interest come from? Do you have an engineering background, or do you do you just kind of like to mess around with 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 sets? And or is there a creative side of you that that this is enabling you to have an outlet? Like, talk about where you know you you had the the initial set and you didn't really build it for a long time and then you just collected was this always kind of building up saying like you, did you have ideas or when you finally got to it did you just decide okay i'm going to just do my own stuff versus build build what mega has created for me um originally i just wanted to try and collect everything that mega had produced because i was so <laughs> yeah. impressed with it uh -huh. um, and, you know, for a long time, I didn't have any of the Pelicans. And then I started getting the Pelican gunships and loft halls. And I couldn't resist. That was one time I got a box with about, well, two or three boxes probably with, I think it was something like 28 sets in as oh. a loft hall. And yeah. it had <laughs> loads of cool stuff in it. And in there was a, was a Pelican amongst loads of other things. But it was all mixed up. And as you know, anyone that's bought a loft hall or something like that, trying to find the pieces in 20 odd sets uh, where it just takes, it's, it's, it's pretty soul destroying at some point. Yes. Yeah. I managed to complete this Pelican gunship, the, you know, that I'd not built one before. Um, I, actually, I actually had one that I bought years ago for 30 pounds off Amazon, which was an absolute bargain. And that's the sort of bargains I'm talking about. Uh -huh. um, but I never built it. It's still in my collection as an unopened box set. But, um, uh -huh. When I built that, that's what really started getting my mind. I was like, wow, this is really cool. Imagine if you could build a really big one. And that's where the, you know, the seed was planted as to, okay, well, if I wanted to build a big one of these, I'd need a lot more of these sets. And that's where I started just collecting as many secondhand collections as I can, not mm -hmm. necessarily for what the complete sets were there, but for the parts. Yeah. Yeah. In, but does in that anticipation of what I would build without but, really knowing 100% what I was going to build at the time? <laughs> but where does that come from? Where does that desire come from? When you ha when you were into Lego when you were younger, did you do a, like your own cities, or did like you know when you got a little older, where you do you build your own stuff? You a DIY guy? Like where does that desire come from? Uh, I'd, I'd say it comes from a little bit of a problem I've got where anything <laughs> I do, I have to do bigger and better than anything else that I've seen. Okay. Um, I, I, I don't know. It, to me, I think I, you know, I watch a lot of YouTube videos re related to Star Wars Lego, uh -huh. and there is just so many videos out there of, uh, I'm sure, you, do they call it uh, the, the massive Star Destroyers? Is it Intimidator or something like that? Would uh, I can't remember what they call it. Um, I don't know if you guys are familiar yeah. with it. It's got an interior. It's huge, this thing. Um and there's all sorts of huge Star Wars mocks, but whenever I was trying to find stuff in relation to Halo Mega Blocks, there wasn't really a great deal of it out there. There was mm -hmm. no one creating anything huge scale. So I thought, you know, I wonder if I can do this. Um, and when I started building that Pelican, I, I had no idea what I was getting myself into. <laughs> <laughs> right. That 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 was that was definitely bit off more than I could chew. I mean, I know I got it finished, but I think it was the pressure of YouTube <laughs> right. that made yeah. me see it through to the end. I couldn't let people down. Couldn't leave it half finished. Well, we're it becomes very quite glad addictive. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's cool. Definitely. That's super interesting to kind of hear how you've. Um, your background and how you got into it. I'm curious now. You know, let's kind of start about the YouTube channel. How how did you decide to get that started? What was the inspiration um, to finally, you know, put put what you're doing as your hobby in your home, um, what you've been collecting out there for the world to to enjoy and 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 follow along? Um, I think it was one of the main channels I was watching at the time was Jang Bricks because he was just doing every review for all the yeah. Mega Blocks. So yeah. he used to be really heavy into it. He, lately, he seems not as keen. And I'm, I'm, I'm guessing it may be something to do with view count because he never seems to get as many views on those videos mm. as he does on his other ones. So maybe it's just for his time. It's, mm -hmm. it's not good enough value for money. Um, but I must have watched every one of his videos at least once with my children. And we used to love watching them. Yeah, they're and great. And I was watching them thinking, I'd love to do that. And then the other channel that used to do Mega Blocks was, it's just a speed build channel, all new bricks or something like that. And yes. they used to do 
stop motion speed builds like they do with all their Lego stuff, but for Mega Blocks as well. But again, they stopped doing Mega Blocks too. Um, and when I was watching these sets build themselves with no hands, mm-hmm. I just thought that <laughs> looks brilliant. I've got to do that. I, I, I want to learn how to do that. And that's what spawned the idea of, okay, I want to do it. But then it was years later that I actually finally got around to saying, right, okay, I'm going to find out what you have to do. Cause I'd never run a YouTube channel before of any, any form. Um, uh-huh. So wasn't really very clued up with anything there. So I had to learn everything of what I had to do. So I basically learned on the go, just set did, it up. Did you ask way. anybody or did you just kind of do your own research? And like, as YouTube has a bunch of uh, resources, I know that. Um, yeah. Um, did you, did, close to home, I kept it secret. It was a bit, it was a bit of a, I just wanted to do it to see how it went. Didn't really want anyone to know what I was doing. Yeah. So I didn't really ask anyone more than that. Everything of what I needed to know, I just read up. On, mm-hmm. on the internet, watch tutorials of how to do basic videos, lighting, and how to do basic stop motion, and so on like that. And everything I do is basic. Um, uh, there's definitely nothing fancy about what I do. Um, I just think it's the content that makes it go mm-hmm. further than it could, basically. For sure. I actually want to jump in and say something here that I didn't get the chance to say on our call when we were catching up and organising this. Um, And actually, part of the reason why I've really stepped back into the mega construct scene myself after just taking a break from it and i've kind of started doing videos here on podcast evolved was because of your videos chris because i remember um i think i was searching for it was a review on one of the newer sets it might have been the frost raven at the time Mm -hmm. and i was kind of going through and obviously i was used to seeing jang bricks's reviews pop up because like you say he used to always do them but i saw one of your videos pop up with obviously your proper studio setup and everything and i just remember thinking this is really cool. There's somebody else who's still into this and is still out there putting loads of really good Halo content together and just getting out there for people who are still enjoying it. And that was actually a big part of what then pushed me into doing this with these guys and getting back into it. So I think, uh, obviously, you say it's just the content, but I definitely think there is a lot of quality there as well that is inspiring other people, whether you realise it or not. Most definitely. I do appreciate that. Um, it, it's it's funny you say that because, you know, when you ask about why I set the channel up, that is another reason. Because the, the content generally seemed to dry up, I thought there must still be lots of people out there that want to see this. Mm-hmm. And it was an experiment to myself. If I was to try and reproduce, you know, reviews to the best of my ability and try this stop motion stuff as well, it will be interesting to see if there are still people. And to be honest with you, yeah, I would say the last 12 months have proven there's definitely people that enjoy Halo and mega constructs enough. In fact, I think it quenched quite a lot of people's thirst for a lack of content. And mm-hmm. I think that, again, uh, has been a big key factor to the channel's growth. Um, just simply, there's not a lot of there's not a lot of other people out there doing it. Yeah. yeah. Well, and definitely. you're doing it well too. I mean, your you, your production value, I think, is fantastic. You yourself, your personality, I think, um, the way you talk on the video, you know, you're genuine and you you have a good way of just connecting with the viewer. So your awesome accent. <laughs> well, for us, right? For us, for us yeah. yeah. We we all, we all just sound like that here. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, yeah, it's been it's been great, and I I do remember. Um, finding because I was starting to get into um, med constructs about a year and a half ago, probably right around when you started. And I remember finding your video, one of your probably when you after you posted one of your first couple videos. Um, and so just seeing like, oh, he's just got a couple hundred views, but I, like he's gonna this if he keeps this up because you had, had talked to you had been dumping all of your hauls out onto the video and saying, here's all the stuff. And you're talking about the yeah. plans that you had, like this is gonna be good. So um, it's been it's been fun to follow. And um, it's it's also I, I think you you mentioned that, you know, there's not there's Halo, um, the community and the, the, the mega constructs, mega blocks community that has been has picked up on what you're doing. But I also feel like I, you've got to be inspired some other people, just people that are interested in brick based sets like Lego people and all that sort of stuff. I would imagine your videos are making the rounds. 
Yeah, I think so. You do get, I do, I read all the comments. On, well, I try to. I read every original comment, but when people comment off the back of comments, you don't always get notified. So it can be, oh. you lose mm -hmm. track of some. But generally, I try to read all the comments and at least acknowledge most of them. But there's definitely been over the last six months more and more people <laughs> reluctantly yeah. tipping their you know tipping their hat to to the to the to the mocks or the channel that are happy to openly confess i'm more of a lego man to be honest but fair play it's a nice mock yeah. so yeah right. i do but you know it, it shouldn't but in some respects it, it goes it goes further than just the general comments of the the mega constructs fans because you you are pulling in an audience that generally wouldn't necessarily want to uh to, to be recognized as watching those kind of videos Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, no, I mean, it's, there's a big audience out there that, you know, I talk about, I think I mentioned maybe in one of our episodes is like this, this is like a niche of a niche, right? Where mm. Halo is a niche and then this built brick based stuff is a niche. Um, and, you know, I think tapping into just kind of this sensibility and the, what you're doing is is kind of broadening that niche about to the people that are big into just you know mox and and lego and and just you know enjoying what you're what you're producing out there so i think it's fantastic what I, i'm curious because i'm a family man myself what is your wife and family um were they involved at all did you did you um you know consult with your wife or were you kind of do it on the side and like already and they said hey i'm going to do this how did that go um, my wife tends to support me in anything I do. If I say I want to do something, she'll believe that I'll do it and I'll do it well. So I don't tend mm -hmm. to waste time or money. If I'm saying I'm going to do something, she knows I'm going to commit to it. So I do get the support there. That's um, great. The, the kids, they think it's great in respect of, you know, daddy plays with toys. Um, <laughs> right. Daddy doesn't always let them play with the toys as much as they'd like to. So that's uh -huh. that. There's that win-lose scenario. They do come up to the studio. If, if um, The studio is at my place of work, so if I need to take care of the kids in working hours for some reason, if my wife's got an appointment, um, they'll come up and they'll sort of busy themselves tearing everything apart mm -hmm. in the space no. of two hours, creating havoc. But they are pretty good. They understand <laughs> why everything's sorted. They, they, know, they know it's a channel. They know that, you know, I need everything where it needs to be. So they're pretty good at putting it all back again. But I do try to give them free reign to, uh, to build what they want, which oh, is good. quite interesting. All sorts of strange things which, uh, <laughs> that they want me to never take apart again. <laughs> right. Yeah. Hey, oh, I know all about that. Um, so I want to talk about your the channel, like the name and like the music for the channel. Like, how, did, can you talk about did, did that process? I mean, you said you're a, a Master Chief fan, um, so you have that nod to him. How did you come up with the name? So I, I've got an experience. I've got a bit of experience running business. So I run a business I have done for the last eleven years. So I know a bit about brand and things mm -hmm. like that. And even though I went into it with just a, let's see what it will do, I know what consistency is with everything. So I wanted to make sure I got my name right from the word go and not start and then want to change my name or anything. So I gave it a lot of thought about what I wanted to do. And I wanted it to be something that people would remember and associate with what I'm doing. Um, so to be honest with you, I'm glad. I've not had any regrets, and I'm quite pleased with the, um, you know, the the fact that it's now becoming known. People, you know, use that that term, that name, in mm -hmm. comments and things on the video. So, in regards to the name, it was just a case of trying to bring an attachment to what I was doing for people to find me easier. Um, in regards to music and things like that. Again, I wanted to try and have consistency like you guys do. It's very professional what you do with all these podcasts. So you always start the same way, end the same way, and so on. That's why I have my intro music and my my outro music to try and always give mm -hmm. a start and a finish. Um, so, yeah, that's that, that's basically what I did there. But all of that I picked up off from watching many YouTube videos on how to start a YouTube channel. Yep, makes sense. So Just, the... You know, took the advice, really. The uh, the it's, I'm sure it's all like rights free and stuff like that. Did it take a long time to pick out the intro music, or um, was it just a, a tune that, that you were drawn to? So, that intro music was one that I it's from the YouTube studio, 
Mm -hmm. so it's on the license free music so you can use it yep um and it's actually called the big conference that okay um that piece of music that you hear at the beginning at the end and the reason i chose that one was because i felt it was really upbeat it, you know it just booms in as soon as the video starts and mm -hmm. even after all this time i'm sure others would possibly disagree but it doesn't bother me it feels like no that's my theme song so it, it's yeah. you know it's there and it doesn't go on too long to offend anyone but it's upbeat enough to 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 kind of get the video going on the right note that's that was the intention with that that song yeah, very nice. And then I just watched. Um, oh, which one did I watch? You had a, you have some uh, different music kind of interspersed. So I would imagine it's all from the the YouTube studio. But you've done a, a good job of. Everything. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You've done a good job of picking stuff that uh, kind of matches with the tone of of the videos and everything. So it's been yeah, um, very good job there. And do you guys have any other questions about the YouTube stuff? I want to go into kind of like the mock stuff and talk about how you like your process for for doing that i want to learn about the time lapse stuff uh, i think that stuff that's amazing to me and, and matt probably may have some questions on that but tom or matt do you have any other questions on just kind of like the youtube channel that that um that brickman has pulled together uh i would actually probably not uh definitely my interest is definitely in the mocks i think those are fascinating yeah i was gonna say mine's the same i just think it's quite um nice hearing about how obviously you used your business experience to then build your brand and everything because i work in marketing for a day job so for me i'm just sat here like cool i like how you've done that but that's the only thing i've got to say on that <laughs> <laughs> thank you well let's talk about these mocks like the the videos so it's a broad term but um you know the the pelican that thing is a beast and yeah. um the the current project the the long sword um, talk about kind of the process that you you go through um, on the front end. Actually, I want to talk about this first because I would imagine it starts with the bricks. Like, how do you sort through all of those bricks? Um, <laughs> you buy, you know, I've seen all the loft halls, and you just kind of dump everything out. And I met, and I know from firsthand experience, I just finally moved on a big uh, hall that I had uh, shared with a local collector to his house now, so it's um, he can work on it, but. Um, it's there's a lot of work when you have all those bricks. What, how do you sort through everything? Um, painfully at home. <laughs> <laughs> so what, I, what I'll do is when I know I need something, I'll bring a, you know, I'll bring a box of say unsorted loft hall or not. Loft hall would have been sorted as it was packed, so I'd know what was there. But the mm -hmm. eBay halls where you don't really know what you've got. I'll bring a box of that home. If it's dusty, I'll just put it in batches through the washing machine. And then basically I just start sorting it all out into colors. And uh -huh. if I want to try and rebuild sets from them, which I quite often do, I quite like to know what I've got. So I'll quite often actually rebuild them into sets. And if it's something I don't have, I'll put it into a clear bag and I pack it away in a box. So I know I've got that set um, and I won't touch it. But if it's something that I've got say six or seven sets of, I might still bag it up. For, for example, phantoms, I think I've got five or six phantoms. Mm. Oh, but I've bagged them all up. Some of them, I think I've got three in boxes used. I've got no brand new ones, unfortunately, but three in boxes and then three or four in bags. And they're all there because I wanted, to, I've got an idea for a video with lots of phantoms. So I, I haven't touched them and I won't use the pieces from them. But if it's something that I'm not that bothered about, for example, rates, I love the rates, but they've got lots of amazing pieces in them for building mm -hmm. lots. So, um, a lot of wraiths got taken apart for the gray blocks in them um, to build the pelican, even though the pelican is, you know, mainly green. Um, but when it was sorting stuff for the pelican, I would just buy rhinos and pelicans off eBay, mm -hmm. get them home. If they weren't dusty, I would just strip them. And then you've probably seen they all get sorted into trays. And it, it's just incredibly time consuming. But yeah, it is as simple as that. Just sort every last piece out. So it goes in its own little box, its own organizer. And then I know where they are. And when it comes to building, you can just build then. Yeah, right. You know, I mean, do you... So you, you have everything organized and then you, you know where all the pieces are, right? Yeah. I mean, so they're right all now, I'm, right now when I'm building the long sword, I've been up a um, couple of nights this week. I generally, if work's busy, I've got to work in the day. I'll go up to the back to where I work in the evening to mm -hmm. 
to work on the longsword. So I'll set myself up with a camera and everything. And then I've got two towers worth of trays of just gray and silver parts, and then two miniature draw assemblies on the desk, and then four screw divider organizer toolbox thingies that I'll mm -hmm. put out on the desk. Now, everything that's everything that I'm likely to use. Um, and then as I need them, I just pull them all out. So it starts off nice and neat. And I've just got the plan out on the desk. Mm -hmm. And then by the end of the night, there's just boxes and bits everywhere. And yeah, right. <laughs> when it gets too chaotic to make sense of, I then tidy it back up, put them all back, and then start again for the next, the next scene that I'm shooting. Does your family help you at all with the sorting? Sometimes. Sure, yeah. <laughs> if they're really bored. If they're really bored. <laughs> Yeah. So I want to rewind to, you said you put everything into the washing machine. <laughs> That's yeah. amazing. Yeah. Where did you come up with that idea? I saw it on a YouTube video. One of oh, the, okay. um, one of the beyond the bricks videos, um, they went to a brick store somewhere where they sell second hand sets mainly. I can't remember where it was, but it really, really big Lego shop. And they showed on there that they wash all their bricks in. It's actually a kit bag. I swim. So where I keep all my, swim float and fins oh, and things yeah. like that. It's in a fine mesh bag. So I just use that, I chuck a load in there with some detergent, put it on a like a quick spin cycle, 30 minutes with some detergent, comes out absolutely spotless. Wow. That's, that's awesome. I would have never yeah. thought about that. And it doesn't damage anything. It's all, it's all fine. I've, I've not seen anything come out damaged yet. They're, I mean, I've had a few damaged pieces, but I'm pretty confident they were eBay hauls. I think they were damaged before they went in, but generally 99.9% uh -huh. .9 doesn't, doesn't get damaged. And it amazingly, it doesn't really scratch. There's a couple of yeah. colors that are a bit more susceptible to scratching, but generally it, it's, it hmm. doesn't scuff them all up or anything. That, that's what I'd be worried about, the smooth pieces, you know, like right, right. looking at your shadow intent, like the, the yeah. domed pieces. Do you I use showed... hot? I'm sorry, do you use hot or cold water with uh, that? Th 30, 30 degrees. That's okay, okay, I think, right? So, yeah, not, not really hot, but not cold either. Okay. Um, nice, the, thank you. The, tra the trans clear pieces, like the domes that you're talking about, I've washed a few of those, and I couldn't believe how well they came out. They're, it's like they're just brand new out of the box, which is amazing. Yeah, that's incredible. Awesome. Um, yeah. Okay, so that's that's the pieces. Now let's talk about these plans because I'm super interested in, are you, do you just tinker? So you, you pick a, you pick a, a project, right? <clears throat> and the Pelican yep. was the first big project. And, um, I think you, you used, um, kind of community feedback on the next one or oh, no, wait, maybe you yeah. said that you had, you wanted to do the long sword that, separate from the community. Yeah. Yeah. The long sword was for me. Um, the Pelican was for me too. I'm greedy. <laughs> I'm <really> selfish. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so the Pelican was something that I just I'd wanted to do from the beginning. It was the first. In fact, no, it wasn't the first build. The first build was the Ultimate Assault on High Ground, which was the first yes. thing I wanted to do because mm -hmm. I loved that set. And I'd never played the multiplayer game. So I was intrigued as to why it was called Assault on High Ground. So when I Googled it and looked at all the pictures and watched a few YouTube videos, I just thought, wow, that's amazing. Imagine if you could build one that big. Yeah. So yeah. I then started collecting High Ground sets and put that together and absolutely i still love that mock it's still set up and i've still got plans i've got the pieces and the plans in my head for phase three of that to to make it yes. bigger which i'm really looking forward to and tom will like this one off the back of that my <laughs> next mock after the pelican was actually intended to be snowbound um oh, when nice. you look at the multiplayer map it's actually two towers but the intention is to build the towers about three feet high each or <laughs> Not if if that's too big, I won't build them that high. But when you look at them in the actual game, they they they're way bigger than the set that yeah, uh, Mega no. released. Mm -hmm. So that was the intention to do there. But I I did the Pelican, and then the reason I didn't do the Snowbound um, mock was because everybody was crying out for a Phantom mock, an Ultimate Phantom. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I knew if I used the pieces, a lot of that purple on a Snowbound mock. I'd probably run out of pieces for a phantom so i decided yeah. not to do that but in the end i went with the long sword anyway so those pieces are now just still sat there <laughs> waiting for a later date right. so um yeah in terms of in terms of plans there was no plans for the pelican it was literally go online look at pictures 
and then put pieces together until they made the right shape. Put them really? together, take them apart, oh. put them together. <laughs> wow. <laughs> that cool. is impressive. So how do you handle scale? How do you figure out, like, if you, you know what I mean? Like, how do you scale it so that everything you want to kind of line up on size with the pieces that, that you have? That was really hard. Um, what I started with was, I've said it in the overview video, was once I saw the Halo Infinite trailer, uh, yeah. the Hope trailer, mm -hmm. um, I just wanted to create that treat bag. I just I was like, gotta, I've got to try and build that. So yeah. I started by, that was phase one with the Pelican, built the treat bag. Once I built the troop bay, the length of that was governed by how much the space the seats took up, five on either side. So I couldn't reduce the size of it. So therefore, I then had to scale everything else to that. So what I then uh -huh. did was I got some, some um, outline pictures off the internet saying how big the pelican was. And then I just basically measured it. So I looked at, um, you can get some side on pictures that show the troop bay in terms of a side on view. So I could measure the troop bay and then measure the, the, the section of the pelican in front of it and behind it, then measure what I had, which would work out roughly how long it had to be. Um, and so what I would do is I'd constantly sort of measure how far I'm likely to go. So you see, after I do the troop bay, I'll start building the cockpit and the armory so what I would do is I would lay the floor down first. So I know I'm right. I can't go any further forward than that. So I've got to try and make all the rest of the angles tie in to uh, make the proportions look right. And the angles look right when they cut back into the uh, troop bay, mm -hmm. which is really hard when all you've got is a troop bay and then yeah. you do the cockpit and you've got no yeah. wings, which you don't know how you're <laughs> going to build or attach it. <laughs> and you don't know how you're going to build the roof or the tail or the engines and you're just kind of hoping that you'll be able to figure it out when you get there. So were you taking um, it apart? Like, did you build it? And then once you had, you said, oh, I got to get the wings on here somehow. Did you have to take things apart to then, so you could attach the wings? Or, or how did that work? Not a lot. You, you, it, when you see the videos of the troop bay and the uh, cockpit, you'll see there's holes. I left sections unbuilt at the mm -hmm. front of the troop bay because I knew that, I'd have to attach them in that area. So I left them. So there was a there was a very small amount of removing and putting stuff back on, but nothing not a not a great deal. It was basically what you see in the speed build videos, um, where it's just time lapsed. That is everything I did. You see everything that I did to build that. So you'll see me take the odd bit apart, put it back on, and that's it. It's literally in my head, look at a picture and just build, and I filmed it. So That's great. Yeah, it, was, it was just, I think it was fortunate that it turned out as well as it did. Yeah. That takes yeah, an definitely. unbelievable amount of technique and skill. That's <laughs> yeah. Just all in your just brain. Like, just like, I've always like, if you try to build something for me, it always ends up where one side, like it doesn't proportionally yep. adjust, <laughs> like connect. Right. So you're like, Oh, I got the troop bay. And then I'd be like, well, the cockpit doesn't seem to be fitting too well. <laughs> yeah. I'm just terrified to build anything. I know. <laughs> yeah, it, it, was, it was definitely my biggest fear that I was going to get to the end of it and it wasn't going to look anything like a pelican. <laughs> <laughs> or, or running out of pieces forever. That was the other fear. I, yeah. There was a lot of pauses during that build. You know, sometimes there would be two months, I think, between a segment um, or a phase. And it was simply because it took me that long for parts to show up on ebay that i could then buy to sort and to carry on with the build mm -hmm. yeah. i could imagine so, um, i wanted to ask because obviously the long sword your current project um and we were speaking earlier a little bit about how you got into halo was a big inspiration in why you wanted to do the long sword the fact that it's so prevalent in combat evolved with that ending like did that encourage you to go away and do that yeah, I mean, you, yeah, straight away, that was, you know, <laughs> such a cool ship. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I, yeah, it's amazing looking aircraft. And when you look at some of the designs online, which look like somebody's recreated it, a couple of companies for a, a, a fan film they were trying to do, they've created yeah. some amazingly detailed images of the longsword. And it, you know, you can believe that that would be a real aircraft. And yeah. whilst there are, lots of vehicles that I will probably make in the future. 
there's something about that that made me so now I've got to build it now again I've got to get things out of my system otherwise I won't be able to really engage with another build yeah and I get that it's kind of having that idea and once you've got it in your head you want to realize it don't you mm-hmm. yeah and once I committed to that it was one of the hardest parts with with, with doing these mocks is getting started because they're so big you know where do i start yeah. and mm-hmm. if you get the if you start wrong you'll end wrong so you've really got to think about what you're going to do first and thankfully with the long sword somebody was kind enough to supply those plans that i'm using um as a base um to loosely go to it, i don't know how well i'll be able to keep to them but um that's a huge help over the way i built the pelican um yeah especially with the long sword being so flat you know, you, you, you're dealing with one, uh, it's just one big flat wing, really. And, a, and the fuselage is relatively simple in comparison to the Pelican. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I get that. I'm quite excited to see how you're going to do things like, um, obviously, the bit just behind the cockpit where I think you can see, like, attack readout in one of the games. Um, I think it's Combat Evolved, actually, as Chief walks through the cockpit, you kind of yeah. see all that kind of stuff. So I'm really excited to see what you do with the interior of that more so than anything i think so that's what going i'm to be doing really at cool. the moment is i'm pillaging every set i have for monitors <laughs> for <printed> tiles, <laughs> and anything that i can use to resemble all of the monitors and the screens yeah. and everything um in that oh, bit. Nice. To be honest, the bit i'm most excited about with creating that long sword is the cockpit and the seating area and that screen in front of it if i do yeah. that right it will be um, really impressive which is what i'm working on at the moment um amongst other things i'm just finishing off that front section is what you've seen so far i'm about halfway through it so hopefully a couple of good sessions next week and i might be able to get a video out for next weekend do you set sorry do you set timelines for yourself to like okay i need to finish this by x date or anything like that are you just kind of doing it as as you go are there plans in place um how does that work out yeah, there are, and I'm terrible at sticking to them because I've got, <laughs> got, got a day job. Um, so whilst we were all on lockdown and I had not a lot to do, I was able to work almost every day on the mm-hmm. channel, which is why I was able to release videos every maybe three, four days maximum. Um, under normal circumstances, it's it's difficult for me to even release a video once a week, but there's a lot of time spent not putting a video together. Um, so um yeah at the moment it's a bit challenging because uh, work is quite quite busy so it's difficult getting enough time there but i basically even if you don't see a video you might not see a video for two weeks but i'll more than likely still have spent at least three nights a week working on that video yeah mm-hmm. yeah yeah, it takes a lot of time, and it's amazing how time flies, right? Yes. Um, yes I don't know if yes. you picked up, and I think with Lego Masters was over in the UK. I think there's a version, but I just watched the recent one, and the time that they give these people, you know, like twelve hours, and it's like twelve hours goes really fast, yeah, probably yeah. when they're working on this stuff. Yeah. Yeah. When I when I'm up there, you once you get in the zone, you just you just want to keep going. Um, mm-hmm. You know, if, if it was a Saturday, for example, I went up there, I'd probably just do eight or nine hours straight and it'd be able to knock out a, a, a phase for the video in one day. But I, working in the evenings after a whole day's work, I generally get, tend to only do two, two and a half hours. Yeah. By that time, I'm burnt out. And it's it's all creativity is really hard. You can't you can't just turn it on if you're in a bad mood. So I don't bother. Mm-hmm. So no, um, no. generally, it's all about what how the day's gone and so on. But um, quite often it's a good way to end the day too because you can get a lot of satisfaction out of achieving something so yep. you know, i do like to make an effort even even if it doesn't feel like it's the uh uh right time to do it yep. yeah definitely that, that makes um, sense i was gonna ask so obviously going back to a moment ago where you were talking about monitors and things like that that kind of made my head race because off the top of my head i can think of a couple of cooler duty sets that have got really good monitors um so when it comes to like picking up pieces for sets do you just try and stick to halo or do you broaden out into all the other kind of mega constructs products that are out there as well 
No, so for some strange reason, I only seem to be able to find Mega <laughs> Strux or Mega Bloss Halo sets, and I don't know why because there's 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 so much more diversity if I was to just buy anything. But for yeah. some reason, I won't mix Lego in with any of my mocks, and it's not because I don't like Lego. I collect Lego too, but I won't mix it because it's just not the way my mind works. If yeah. I say I'm mm-hmm. going to build something out of Mega Blocks or Mega Constructs, it has to be built out of that, and also. The temptation to use glue or things like that. I won't. I, I won't use glue or anything that's not there. And I also won't cut bits down. Um, I yeah. know it's tempting when you're trying to create a shape that just doesn't want to be created from the pieces you've got. You go, well, if I just shave that bit off there or snip a bit off of this. <laughs> um, generally, I, I won't. I won't do that. Um, I don't want to get into that habit. I want to try and create something that you can create from genuine pieces. Um, and when it comes to the Call of Duty stuff, I've actually got, I've actually collected quite a lot, but only because it's come in eBay hauls. Okay, um, yeah. And I haven't had a chance to sort it out yet. But um, yeah, I need to have a think about that really, because as you've said, there's a lot of good, there's a lot of good parts out there that could lend themselves very well to my mocks. But for some reason, I, I need to make my head accept the fact that I can use all the <laughs> yeah. parts in a Halo mock. <laughs> no, I get that. I mean, it's the colors, right? Like, that's why you yeah. probably wouldn't mix Lego or or if you're doing a close-up, yes. someone would read the little Lego on the on the, yeah. um, <laughs> the stud, right? You'd be like, wait a minute. Yeah. So, no, I totally get that. That makes sense. But, yeah, I would um, encourage you, if you haven't had experience with the Call of Duty stuff, grab a couple of those because there yes. are some good good pieces. And, like, you know, like we just talked about the specialized pieces, the monitors and stuff like that. Um, you know, there might be some stuff that you can pull in and incorporate. And it's still mega. It's just not yeah. mega. <laughs> well, it's, it's funny, actually. After my speech about not using it, I've just remembered I have bought a Call of Duty set specifically for phase three of the ultimate assault and high ground mark. Okay, so, there you go. Yeah, I, I will be mixing. Um, cool. So, yeah. Yeah, there is that, I guess. There, yeah, there's a lot of good parts there once you get past that as well. I mean, for monitors, I built... Um, the Apache the other day, I think it's called like the anti armor helicopter because they didn't license the Apache name, but it's got um some really unique pieces in it where there's like a um I don't know how to describe it. It's like a two by two tile, but then it kind of cuts down at an angle because it goes along one side mm. of the chopper and it's got a keyboard right. on it. And I can just right. see bits like that making really, really cool consoles. So there's definitely a lot of kind of cool little bits out there. It's it's worth knowing because the biggest problem I've got with this phase that I'm doing with the long sword at the moment is I I think I'm going to struggle for enough console pieces to fill yeah. the cockpit out the way I want to. But what I'll do is I'll simply finish it without the console pieces, but allow it so I can just add them in later. Yeah, that's a good idea. Um, I do have a few ideas. The plan is there's some quite um, uh, obvious consoles above the above the co-pilot and pilot seat and i'm planning on using the i don't know if you've seen them but they're they're like um monitors in the infinity set yeah mm-hmm. cool. okay yep that would work so really well there's three blue clear monitors that go on just hinge pieces basically yeah. so i'll be using all of those and there's some keyboard pieces in there which are really nice as well so those will definitely go in there Problem is, I would like a few more of them, but I don't want to have to open up one of my other Infinity sets just to get those <laughs> pieces out. I won't do that. That's another thing I can't do. <laughs> oh, I hear that. i got to um, stay glued. <laughs> I have a couple other questions. We're, we're, this is a great conversation, Chris, um, and thanks for staying up late with us. Um, but there's a couple other questions before I kind of want to wrap. And I think, you know, we talked about off the air is like maybe we have another one of these um, or something else. But um, I think I feel like we could talk for hours. So (laughs) um, (laughs) there might be a part two to this conversation. I want to talk about the time lapse or the um, kind of you you call them stop motion two. Um, how how is that process? How how does that work out? Um, I've never attempted that. It seems super interesting. I f- imagine there's like a shaky cam thing you have to deal with. Um, Matt probably has some questions about that too. How how, how does um, is it? How long does it take like to, for you to okay, build? So, I know. That, yeah. So, so I do I do two different types. So I do stop motion speed build, which is actually my favorite type of video to make, which is where I think um, Tom mentioned the. Uh, Frost Raven build. So I stop motion speed built that where I've just got a stop motion app on my iPhone, which is what I use for doing all of my filming. Mm -hmm. And literally you get your pieces out, you get the stop motion app going, 
you set the camera up and you don't move it and you make sure you don't move it and you literally put one piece down in front of you, take a picture, next piece down, take a picture, next piece down, take a picture. So you end up with, if it's a 2000 piece set, yeah, you'll end up with a minimum of 2000 shots that you string together. But when I do them, you will have noticed I tend to rotate the model as well. So I don't build the model the way the instructions say to build it. I'll build right. it. So I might skip five steps ahead because they agree with the area I'm building in. Mm -hmm. And then I also, the engines, for example, on the Frost Raven, they'll show you to build the engines on the en ends of the wings on their own and then attach them. But rather than do that, I'll build them. I'll make them build themselves or appear to be building themselves off the end of the wing. Yep. Yeah. And then rotate the blades and everything mm. while I'm doing it. So you're adding in loads and loads of frames. So it's very complicated because you've got to remember what bits you missed and then go back. Because the reason you do that is if you chop and change the way they do in instructions, you're constantly changing where the camera is and where you're looking. And people can't, if you're building at the back one minute and then the instructions tell you to build at the front, people are looking at the back while the front's building itself. So what I'll do is I'll always make sure I kind of want to, I, I, Ideally, you want to start building at the front and then the, the whole set builds its way back. Mm -hmm. Not as easy as that, but that's the concept that I'm trying to create when I do the stop motion speed builds. Well, and I appreciate that you have fun with it too. Like you'll you'll turn the camera and then you'll like show some articulation or something like that and then yeah. continue <laughs> on. I think uh, one of your stop motion, I forget which one, like you had a figure walk in and, um, and like say hello. So um, yeah. yeah, it seems like you're having fun with it. That's definitely one of the big appeals for doing that side of it. When I'm doing the time-lapse speed builds, like you saw with the Pelican, that's literally just put my iPhone on time-lapse and you set a time, because I don't know if you know, it's weird with the iPhone. It's not the most ideal thing to do anything with, but it works. Um, and whether you shoot for 10 minutes on time-lapse or whether you shoot for an hour on time-lapse, it compresses it to 30 seconds of footage. You just see less frames through that time. Mm. So if you want to see me putting lots of pieces on, you need to keep those segments short. So I'll set a timer for, say, 15, 20 minutes. When that goes off, I stop the time-lapse, and then I set the timer again, and I start it again. So I get 20 minutes segments which all add up to 30 seconds and then when i go to edit them if they're too fast i slow them down in editing and if they're too slow and it's going to drag the video out too long i speed them up to try and mm -hmm. keep it as interesting as i can but you're still seeing it being built otherwise you you miss too many sections if you let the time lapse go for too long you just see oh huge sections just appearing yeah nice, was it a painful nice. process to figure that out or did uh, right. you well, I would imagine there was some trial and error in figuring that yeah. that out. Yeah, wasted time. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right, we won't yeah, talk well, about what, that. <laughs> once, once, once you, uh, now I'm very strict with the timing. Like what I'm doing at the moment with the longsword and filming that time lapsed, I'm very strict with my timing. And I've actually, because I'm trying to, I'm taking viewer feedback of, you know, sometimes the camera's too far away, so you can't actually see much. And also a lot of people prefer it when I, talk through the build and explain so what i do is i'm time lapsing a section of it so in this phase there'll be four separate time lapse sections with me talking about each one in between just very briefly just because mm -hmm. that's what people tend to prefer but so you can see more i've reduced the time that i'm allowing the camera to time lapse for because it gives you more flexibility with almost to a point where it's a tutorial because a lot of people say oh, can you show us how to make this? But you can't really see it in a time lapse because it skips too much. Mm -hmm. um, so to try and see almost every piece going down, I'm slowing it down. So yeah, I'm learning all the time and trying to change it to suit what the viewers want, basically. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Now, do you, have, uh, do, you have some, do you have some trouble with keeping your iPhone stable or do you have ever had that moment where you've like bumped into the camera and it's changed the, the time lapse? Yeah, so time lapse isn't so bad because you can move the camera in time lapse. And I've realized that at first I lived in fear of that. And then I realized if you bump it, just make it look like you meant to do it and move <laughs> it really obviously. And then it just looks like you've adjusted it for a better angle. Mm -hmm. um, when it oh. comes to the stop motion, you, you, you'll know, Matt, if you, you're doing stop motion, yeah, just never move the camera. And as you know, that makes everything hard. Um, 
the whole concept of filming the time lapse for these um, speed builds makes it so much more long winded and frustrating because you've constantly got to be aware of where the camera is and where your hands are. Mm, sure. Yeah. And also, you're mm-hmm. stopping and starting timers all the time and you're stopping and starting the phone. If you were able to just build, it would be a lot easier, but then we wouldn't be talking to each other if I didn't film it. <laughs> right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Cool. You just have, you just have a, a museum, your own museum to enjoy in your uh, in your house. Yeah. Any other I questions, guys? Before we uh, before we cut, I feel like we're we're this has been a ton of fun, but Chris is probably getting tired and he's gonna get to bed soon. <laughs> yeah. Bye. Um, Any questions, guys? I just say thanks for coming on. It's been really fun, and obviously, I think um, we've only really just started out doing this fairly recently. So it's really nice getting to talk to somebody who I think is doing something really unique in the community. Cause like you say, there's not really anyone out there who's doing big builds anymore. I mean, I can remember a while back where people used to do like, I had a friend who did a big styrofoam build of Ragnarok that I'll have to dig out and show you at some point. Um, but there's just none of that kind of stuff anymore. So it's really, really nice that you're doing that, you're pursuing it. And equally, just listening to the way you were talking, the fact that you were taking into consideration viewers as well, because I think that's what it's all about. So absolutely keep doing what you're doing. I think we're all really enjoying it. And it's been great getting to learn a little bit more about it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, definitely. Just to piggyback on that, I think there's a lot of the stuff that you're doing just is so mind blowing right now. Just thinking about how you're scaling everything and how you the sets that you choose. And I agree with Tom, how you focus on the listeners is also very excellent. I did have a question. I think I was going to ask, uh, what sets would you like to see coming out in the future? If uh, like what parts or what kind of little uh, sets that haven't been built or maybe like a redesign, would you like to kind of see mega construct come out with yeah so that that's a good question definitely um the the, the covenant assault car i'd love to see mega do uh, you know like the shadow of intent that I've, i'd love to see mega produce something as a signature mm-hmm. set a, a big one you know really spend some time on it and maybe even create some new pieces on it to uh, pieces for it especially to get that you know absolutely perfect result like a, i use mm-hmm. the um the canopy from the I oh, slipped my mind now. What, what what did I use the canopy from, guys? Is it the, the banshee? No, not the banshee. The bigger oh. one. The... Yeah, I know what you're talking about. The um, locust. Yeah. The one from Reach. Yeah. Oh, oh the yeah, spirit. Yeah. No, <laughs> the saber. No, not the saber. Saber. Oh no, the seraph. Saber. No, seraph. There it is. Uh, Boom. I got it. Yeah, the serif. Yeah, yeah, serif. Sorry, guys. Yeah, it is late. Um, yeah, so it'd be good if they produced a, a, something that looks better than that for the front of the ship they could do. Definitely mm-hmm. like to see them do that. Um, also, would really like them to reproduce a Phantom. Definitely. They yes. could, do, they could yeah. do a better job with the Phantom now, I think, with mm-hmm. their yes, new sure. parts of the entry. Um, and then the only other sets that I really would like them to do is they've got to release a blister back is from... Yes. Um, yeah, yes. from Halo Wars. <laughs> that mm-hmm. thing just looks amazing. And also the Wraith. I don't know if they call them something different. Do they do they call it a different type of Wraith? But it's got yeah, all like it's the, just uh, the banished Wraith. Yeah, the, the blades yeah. on the front of it just makes it look amazing. So if they if they produce those two sets, I think they would be really uh, really impressive. So I'd like to see those. Yeah, definitely. They yeah. did a miniature yeah, Hot Wheels cool. version of that, if you've seen that. It's pretty rad. They did a what, sorry? A little Hot Wheels uh, version of that, oh, really? Mattel. Yeah. So no, look, look I've not up. seen it. Yeah, look that up online. It's pretty sweet. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Well, awesome. Thank you so much, Chris, for joining us. Thank you. It's been a great conversation. Hopefully, we have more of these. Um, again, we could talk for hours. I feel <laughs> like um, this is this has been a lot of fun. Anything else you want to talk about um, from your channel before we before we wrap up? Um, lots more longsword stuff. Anything else you want to hint at? Yeah, I think that's it, really. The guy, most people know the deal. Just keep stay tuned for uh, all of the latest videos, and I'll I'll just keep keep building as long as people keep watching. And yeah, thanks to everybody that does watch, and thanks to you guys for having me on because it's a great show. I really appreciate oh, it's it. It's definitely it was amazing having you on. Lots of yeah, insightful comments. Great. I'll be happy to come back sometime, guys. Awesome. Cool. Awesome. That will do it for our show. Thanks for joining Builds with Blocks with special guest Brickman117. If you like the show, feel free to support Podcast Evolved on Patreon. Until next time, Evolved. Evolved.
evolved. Chris. Evolved. Yes. <laughs>